接着我们来看，继续前面的整个讨论里头，谈到了台海问题。最近，美国前国务卿 Henry Kissinger 他过一百岁，他总共接受了好几个媒体的采访，包括《经济学人》七个小时的采访，包括《华尔街日报》的采访。他最近呢，又接受了 Bloomberg 的采访，而他每次的采访里头都一再一道的提到。美中之间的问题，乌克兰战争要怎么样解决，以及台海的问题，在接受 Bloomberg 的时候，他更直接的回答台海问题。他说，台海问题跟美中关系根本就已经站在悬崖顶上。如果你没有在悬崖顶上立刻的赶快去谈判处理问题的话，将来就会走向一个不幸的一个循环。而从他的这个访问里头，我们回头来看助教 Blinken 这次访问中国。所以我刚才用了一个字眼，它其实不是历史性的，也是关键性的。中美关系正常化半世纪以来，在台湾问题上都避免了灾难，但华府政界已形成一种共识，即这种和平可能不会持续太久。拜登上任后，至少在三个场合表达保卫台湾免于中国的武力侵略，这触动北京对主权的敏感神经。There's always a metaphor. Well, I think the first time you said we were in the foothills of a new Cold War, and then we went up to the mountain passes. Then the world was on a precipice, looking over. But each time we talk, the relationship between America and China seems to be worse. Is that is that true today? I say we are now at the top of a, the precipice, <laughs> and one of the big problems is. Both sides need to step back from it simultaneously. If one of them steps back, it is falling. So both have to decide to take the tension out of the situation. Ji Xinji 接受彭博社的专访，这是他上个月百岁寿辰前后陆续接受多家媒体访问以来对中美关系最悲观的一次谈话。从四月在《经济学人》的专访中谈台海和平的路线图。到五月时，在《华尔街日报》上以一个无解问题形容台湾，再到现在，美中都已站在悬崖顶上。见证美中关系起落的季新吉，在台湾这难解的习题上发出警告。Well, on the current trajectory of relations, I think some military conflict is probable, but I also think the current trajectory of relations. Must be altered. The Navy is always on alert. One third of the Navy is always deployed and operating at all times. The Navy is mustering right now about 300 ships, and there are about 100 ships at sea right now all around the globe. 今年初以来，美军印太司令部进行一系列的宣传。陆续邀请各家美国媒体登上航母采访，美军总展现出随时能战的姿态。We met him last month on the aircraft carrier USS Nimitz, deployed near the U.S. territory of Guam, southeast of Taiwan, and the People's Republic of China, or PRC. In the early 2000s, the PRC Navy mustered about 37 vessels. Today, they're mustering 350 vessels. And if China invades Taiwan? What will the U.S. Navy do? It's a decision of the President of the United States and a decision of the Congress. It's our duty to be ready for that. But the bulk of the United States Navy will be deployed rapidly to the Western Pacific to come to the aid of Taiwan. 虽然不到交战的程度，但美军确实增加在西太地区的活动。与此同时，北京也更加针锋相对的回应。习近平主持召开二十届中央国家安全委员会第一次会议，强调加快推进国家安全体系和能力现代化。会议强调要坚持底线思维和极限思维，准备经受风高浪急甚至惊涛骇浪的重大考验。习近平在上个月底首次提出引发关注的极限思维。On Saturday, a near collision on the Taiwan Strait. The U.S. accused a Chinese warship of cutting off a U.S. Navy destroyer. The U.S. says both ships came within 150 yards, less than 500 feet of each other. The U.S. destroyer took emergency measures to avoid a collision. A close encounter, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin called extremely dangerous. Tensions already high, getting even higher. Just days earlier, over the South China Sea, a mid-air incident caught on camera. A Chinese jet 
dangerously close to a U.S. reconnaissance plane. The U.S. calls this an unnecessarily aggressive maneuver. 中美在台海与南海的极简遭遇，恰恰体现习近平的极限思维，也印证了中共中央党校机关报《学习时报》一篇文章对极限思维的解析。在最极端的状况下，要有最坏的打算，如同胆小鬼赛局，不要命的最大。也如基辛格所观察，美中都已站在悬崖顶上，都以边缘政策逼着对手就范，而先行退让的一方就代表输了这场赛局。要避免战争，只能双方都各退一步。On the other hand, wars have become either unwinnable with the advanced weapons. Or winnable only at costs that are out of proportion, and so I support efforts to negotiate with China, and I've been urging them. 而中美都想在台湾问题上比战，正是布林肯访问北京的理由。Were there to be a crisis over Taiwan, the likelihood is that that would produce an economic crisis that could affect quite literally the entire world. President Biden believes strongly that one of the successful aspects of our relationship with China going back five decades has been the responsible management of the Taiwan question. We continue to believe that that's essential. When President Nixon began to move together with Chairman Mao towards progress in the American-Chinese relationship. There had been 162 negotiations about Taiwan in Warsaw, which ended very quickly on each occasion, because each side put forward the proposals that the other side would not accept. What this process needs, above all, is a deep conviction on both sides, and it is not. Simply a tactical move, but a necessity for our period. Taiwan has entered a classic war-to-war scenario. It points out that, from the perspective of the Kremlin, the outcome of the war will be decided by the Taiwan side and the Beijing side. And its Taiwan peace route is not clear. It is a one-sided communication exchange, trying to avoid a conflict, but also to prevent the opponent from using his military and military brain. 